Today I have this real world part printed in carbon fiber nylon along with a bunch of other materials. And we're gonna break them all, because science. Welcome back to Cloud42, I'm James. Well, in a bunch of previous videos, you've seen me using carbon fiber reinforced nylon 3D printing filament for a number of projects. And I have gotten no end of comments from people saying that there is nothing special about that filament and that ordinary PLA or PETG is perfectly adequate for all of those applications. Well, today we're gonna to put it to the test. I've got a part that I designed for a previous video mounting a sound bar to my television here in the shop. And we're gonna use that part to do some stress testing. I have printed it out in a bunch of different materials and we're gonna put them to the test. So let's get started. This is a part that I designed and printed in a previous video to mount a sound bar under my shop TV. This material is the Chidi PA12CF, which is one of the many carbon fiber reinforced nylon filaments on the market. It's no secret that I love this stuff. I love how it prints, I love how it looks, and so far I've been pretty happy with its performance, and we'll see if that changes today. I have the same part here printed in a bunch of different materials. This one is PLA. This is the Chidi brand. The four on it means that it has four external perimeters. The first one I printed only had two, so I reprinted it with four to match all of the others. This one is PETG or PETG if you like. This is the eSun brand. This is ABS. This is also the eSun brand. And this has been my go-to material for many years for engineering parts. This is the Chidi PA12 carbon fiber, and I really do like the way this stuff prints. It's a little more rigid than other nylons that I've used, and I do have high hopes for it, but we'll test here in a minute and see. And this one is Nylon X. This was a request from viewers. There are a lot of people that wanted to see how the Nylon X compares to the Chidi PA12 carbon fiber. I wanna test two things today, deflection under load and ultimate braking strength. These parts are all printed with the same settings, four outlines, four top and bottom layers, 20% infill, and they're all printed to optimize the material properties for this application with the extrusions extending all the way from the screws on one end to the bolt holes on the other. So we don't have any kind of cross grain situations where the layers should be easy to break. Note that there are a lot of other things that we could be testing like creep, impact resistance, fatigue lifetime, but we're gonna ignore all of that today in the interest of getting some useful data without making everyone crazy, especially me. This is the setup I'm going to use for the deflection testing. I have a piece of steel here in the vise. I've milled a slot in the end and put in a couple of threaded holes that match the holes in the part. I'll just mount each part in turn using two screws, tighten that down, and then put a piece of paracord through the bolt holes on the other end. This will give me a repeatable way to apply the same force to every part. Just clip on a carabiner and then for weight, I have about 10 pounds of weights from the gym that I can just clip on. We'll put a dial indicator on the part to measure the deflection and then just load it up with the weights. This will give us a nice, predictable, repeatable way to put the same load on all of the parts and see how they behave. Since I've already got the Chidi Tech PA12 carbon fiber part here in the fixture, we'll go ahead and test that one first. I'm making an effort here to make sure that I have the dial indicator at the same point on every part, and then we'll just load it up and see how far it moves. Now, as has been pointed out in the comments many times, this material is gonna have some creep characteristics and you can see it here. So I'm just going to take the deflection after five seconds and we'll just do the same on every part. So we're essentially ignoring the creep. I'm recording 69 thou of deflection for the PA12 carbon fiber. Next up is the PLA. And yes, I do see the angle on that indicator. It's not going to make enough of a difference to matter. Give this five seconds and it looks like we're gonna to get to about 71 thou. So that is ever so slightly more than the PA12 carbon fiber. So this stuff is almost as rigid in a deflection test. Next up is the PETG. This stuff has a reputation for being tough, but also very flexible. And it looks like that reputation is deserved. 
let this creep for about five seconds and I'm going to call that 97 thou. That's quite a bit more than the other materials. So I'm going to say its reputation is well-deserved. This is the ABS. This has always been my go-to material for machine parts. Let's see how it fares with the load applied. Let that creep for about five seconds and I'm going to call that 71 thou. That is almost exactly the same as the PLA and just ever so slightly more than the PA12 carbon fiber. Last up is the Nylon X. My subjective experience with this stuff is that it is pretty flexible. Let's see what the weight says. Wow. Give it its five seconds and I'm going to call that 60 thou. That is actually the most rigid material we've tested today. That was a surprise. Cool. The question that motivated this entire video was whether the PA12 carbon fiber was really that special, if it was really that different from other common materials like PLA and ABS. And it looks like, in, from our testing, at least in terms of deflection under load, the answer is no, not really. It performed just about the same as PLA and ABS. Now, the PLA and ABS were ever so slightly more flexible, but it's not enough of a difference to see in any real application, and it is definitely not enough to justify the $100 a kilo price of the PA12 carbon fiber. The PETG performed about as expected. It's a little more flexible than any of those. The real standout for me, though, was the Nylon X. That is quite a bit more rigid than I expected, and it's something I will consider for the future. Now, I don't really like the way the Nylon X prints. I don't really like the way it looks, but you can't deny it is definitely more rigid. Next, we're going to test the ultimate braking strength of the parts. Instead of pressing down like we did for the deflection test, I have flipped the part over in the vise, and we're going to pull up with hydraulics until they break. I've got the paracord doubled up. That's attached to a crane scale, and the crane scale is on my engine hoist. I've printed two copies of the part in each material, and we'll just break both of them and take the average. First up is my beloved PA12 carbon fiber. We'll just start putting force on it until it pops. Now there it's cracked, but it hasn't fully let go yet. The force is still increasing. No, that was the peak, 55.7 newtons. Let me put in the second part and let's try again. This one's getting a little bit further and there it is, 64 newtons even and that works out to an average of 59.9. Next up is the PLA. Let's see how much force this can take. This is what everybody in the comments is telling me I should be using instead and so far this is looking really good. Wow, it's looking really good. 82.3 newtons. That's a lot more than I expected. Let's try the other one. Looks like we already peaked at 74.1 newtons. That comes out to an average of 78.2. That's quite a bit more than the PA12 carbon fiber. Let's try the PET-G. This stuff is flexing quite a lot, but it also appears to be really strong. Wow. Okay, 153.8 newtons peak. Let's put the second one in and break it. 36.7. That is way lower. I've got a third one. I'm going to go ahead and break it and see what happens. That's not consistent enough for me to be happy with those results. Is this one going to be strong or weak? Looks like weak. 46.6. You take the average of all three, you get 79, but I'm not sure that's fair. I'm going to take the average of the two lower ones, 41.7 newtons, and my thinking on that is that because this isn't consistent, I don't think you should be designing counting on that really high strength number we got in the one test. I think you've got to be realistic and take the two lower ones. If you think the higher ones should be counted, go ahead and give your argument down in the comments. Next up is ABS. Now I have no idea what to expect. It's cracked at 37.4, but it's still going, but the force is continuing to decrease. So 37.4 is the peak. We'll call that the result for this test. They put in the other one and try it. 
39.2 newtons, and then it's just decreasing from there. So that works out to an average of 38.3 newtons, which is disappointingly low. I think this is another filament that I had overestimated. So far, PLA is looking better than anything we've tested. Let's try the Nylon X, see if we have any more surprises in store. Okay, I think it's opened up a little initial crack there. Let's keep going. And it fails fully at 69.3 newtons. Let me put in the other one and let's try it. And that one fails at 71.3 newtons. That's an average of 70.3. That's actually really consistent. I'm impressed. Where does that leave us? Well, surprisingly, or maybe not surprisingly to many of you who have commented on previous videos, the PLA is the strongest. In this test, it outperformed Nylon X, PA12 carbon fiber, and PETG and ABS by a considerable margin. So all of you who left comments on those previous videos telling me I should have been using PLA because it is actually stronger, you're right. At least in this application, in this test, it sure appears to be. Now, keep in mind, we only tested a couple of properties, but the PLA and Nylon X were also among the best performers for the deflection test, so I think those are both excellent choices, depending on your application. We didn't test heat resistance, and I know that's something that PLA struggles with. We didn't test UV exposure, we didn't test creep, we didn't test a whole list of other properties that might be important in your application. So strength isn't everything, but... For those of you who said PLA was stronger, yeah, you're right. I'm surprised. I will take this information and use it when I'm choosing materials in the future. You'll probably see quite a bit more PLA here on the channel. It certainly is easy to print, and if it performs, I'm going to use it. The one thing I found really disappointing about this test was the performance of the PET-G. I don't really feel like it got a fair test. Looking at these parts afterward, I can see that where the support material was touching the print, there are a lot of little defects in the surface, and I wonder if maybe that created a stress riser on the part that caused it to fail prematurely. Without doing more testing, it's really hard to tell. Maybe I'll do some more testing in the future, but for now, this is what I've got. I printed these parts, and this is how they performed, so I think this is a realistic expectation for how they'll perform if I need them to in a real application. Maybe I'll get a chance to play with this some more and maybe there's a recipe or maybe a different part geometry will work better because I think this material's really got potential. It just didn't perform in this test. Well, that settles that, right? There are no further questions. Yeah, no, there were always further questions. Go ahead and jump down in the comments to see everything that I did wrong. And actually, if I did something wrong, Jump down in the comments and tell me about it. I just did some very basic testing of a couple of properties that were important for my particular application. There are all kinds of other properties that matter depending on what you're doing with the filament, like surface lubricity or compressive strength or fatigue lifetime. And those are all things that are important for some applications. There is no one best material. There is just materials that are a good fit for certain applications. So let's have a conversation about it down in the comment section. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Feel free to subscribe to the channel and maybe consider checking out Patreon. Patrons get access to downloadable files, CAD models, and drawings for all of my projects, and a little bit of a peek behind the scenes. Thank you for watching.